today if I can be heard over the background music system here uh, the Jopix AP10 or Jopix or whatever it's called with no idea um, this is like that Thunderpole T3000 which we actually like um, because the programming is kind of you, you put it in UK mode and you can flick through to uh, CPT FM and then through to CPT AM and then back to UK FM so it does it without having to faff about and we found it worked well so is this the same innards or is it just a 20 pound cheaper set that looks the same so that's what we're here to find out so somebody mentioned one of these and uh, so i said i will buy one in and we will see whilst i was buying in one of these i got another joe pick set from our wholesaler which is a smaller or smaller in price model so we get a nice microphone which is nice plastic has a nice weight there's lots of use and a six pin plug a power lead some pokey things to get it out of the dinny mount self-adhesive mic clip some rattly more oh a spare fuse a cigarette lighter power lead the DIN E bracket there you get a standard cradle type bracket there so you have that choice of mounting options Made in the Republic of China, serial number 125. Extension speaker socket on the back. And if I remember rightly, there were about four adjustments in this, if it's the same as the Thunderpole T3000. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll power it up first. Power supply at 13.8 volts. Might eventually find which way that fits. There we go. And of course it comes on in CPT channels. So you have auto squelch to the left, manual squelch to the right, and a useful display. Dimmer, and in its second function, it does color change. Oh, what did it do there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're into color mode. I think we'll have the green one today. And then when we go to, to band, if we can get out of that. Um, band, CE, UK, there we are, UK, UK it is, so now it says UK, hopefully when I press band, No, I was going to read this instruction book, can't I? So, quick flick to band, change it to CPT, and then back to UK, CPT, and so I would think if we press 
this for a longer press, it'll go into AM. No, it doesn't. It goes into... Oh, dear. I'm telling you a load of rubbish as usual. short press will put it between AM and FM, a long press will select the multi-standard selection. Interesting. So unlike the, it looks to me like it doesn't hop between AM and FM in CPT mode uh, when it's set to UK channels. Let's get back to uh, it being locked in. So we're in UK FM. Move the band switch, we're in CE. Move the band switch, we're in UK. So to do AM FM, we would have to go to CE mode, I think it, we, it is. No. EU mode. And now we should be able to go AM and FM. So we're back to the cumbersome thing. So the firmware is not like the Thunderpole 3000. So it does not go neatly from one to the other. But at least you don't have to switch it on and off. Anyway, we'll go back to UK, which is what we're here to do. So we'll just select the UK. channel 20 so that's the first difference connect the aerial which is the test instrument and see how many watts it's, it's doing so switch to picture in picture and let's C. We'll start off in the three watt mode. So we're now on twenty UK, two point seven watts. So there's nothing new there, is there? Right. We'll get the radio opened up. So on this one, unlike the Thunderbolt 3000, we don't have three presets to the right of the display board. We only have two. We never did find out what the, the one in the middle did anyway. And we've got two presets just there. Upper one, lower one on the display board. And we know the upper one is AM modulation. We're not going to touch that because we're not going to be bothering with AM at all. And we came to the conclusion with the Thunderbolt 3000 that that would be accessory for the microphone accessory. You've got a Kenwood standard socket there to take, really, they're aiming at a, at a Bluetooth dongle. So on the Thunderbolt 3000, the top preset was deviation and the bottom preset was power. So we'll see whether we're in a, a similar situation with this one. So we'll put the mic in, switch it back on, ensure we're on channel 20. Right, we'll press the dimmer button, like that. Better put that cover back and we'll be dazzling the camera. So let's have a look. There's the trimming tool. We'll put the power meter into the 30 watt scale. So we've got 5 watts, 4 watts, just about 2.5. And, and the lower preset should bring the power up. It's capable of doing 4.8 watts. And we'll just drop our sample down to 4, which is the UK legal limit. 
So that's interesting because when we did the Thunderpole one, we could get 4.1 as a max. So this uh, is able to do that a little bit more. Just a bit more on top of the job. Of course, it's going to be what tolerance from one set to another. And deviation. Let's get the little oscillator. One point four, so we'll adjust the upper one. See how that is with the whistle test. Wow, it's far too high. Go back to the oscillator. Wow, it's still too loud. Wallow. Wallow. It's still a little too loud. I'll get this right eventually. Do you know it was probably right as it was? Wallow. That's it. 2.2 kilohertz. Absolute peak 2.5. So we're not going to touch the AM because we're not interested in that. We're not doing CPT here. I'm sure there's other people who were. Uh, will demonstrate AM to you. Um, so that's it, they're just the two adjustments, deviation and transmit power. You've got nothing for the receiver and your S meter and the RF meter are just um, um, as it's set. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's prove whether this um, bar graph RF meter is fake or not. So we know the radio is doing four watts. I'll keep the on, on screen display there, so we know we're doing 4 watts. I'm now going to turn the power down. So we're now down to half a watt, and the bar graph remains exactly the same position. So once again, it's fake. Set that back to 4 watts. It's no better than having a TX line. The little loudspeaker is rectangular in this one. Right, we'll put it back together. Those in loosely for now. But it's very interesting that the Thunderpole T3000, once you put it into UK mode, you could go from one press it would go to CPT, the next press it went to AM CPT, next press. It went back to UK FM and so on. Next press back to CPT FM, next press CPT AM. And this doesn't do that, so the firmware is different and inferior. So those of you who want to use AM easily, you'll need to buy the Thunderpole 3000 and not this version. Right, we'll plug our test instrument into the extension speaker socket and we'll move our second camera onto the cyanide meter. Which will switch on.
So we'll start with 20 dB cyanide. Well, I'll tell you what, let's just see what S, where S9 is on this meter. It's about plus 10. So we would have it a bit um, less coarse than that. Anyway, it's near enough. So, looking at the cyanide meter, we want 20 dB. There's our 20 dB figure. And if I read this off, it is 1 microvolt. Which is very good. So now we want 0 points. The industry standard is 12. And for 12... Naught point four five microvolts, and for ten out there, actually, not much difference. We're actually off frequency, let's start again. So for 20 dB, the radio is doing 0.55 of a microvolt for 20 dB cyanide. For 12 dB cyanide, it's 0.2. And for 10 dB cyanide, it's 0.17 microvolt. So actually, this sample is more sensitive than the Thunderpole version. So we'll now look at the squelch. It's a manual squelch. It's coming in. I'll park the signal generator. In fact, we'll move down to the... Uh, attenuator control so you can see what I'm doing okay so we parked at 0 0.3 of a microvolt switch the signal generator on and it's coming in. So it's going out at 0.22 of a microvolt and it's coming in at 0.3 of a microvolt, which is excellent. So we'll move the squelch now to full. And let's see where it is now. I'd like it to be 100 microvolts for full squelch. So 1 microvolt, 3 microvolts, 10 microvolts, 30 microvolts, 100 microvolts. So that's S9 equivalent. And what's that? 300 microvolts. So it's coming in at 1 millivolt, which is a bit coarse. It's, it's a good plus 30, that. So on the auto squelch, again, we'll park it at 0.3 of a microvolts. Switch to auto squelch. And advance it once again. So 1 microvolt, it's coming in. So a fine test on that for you. It's 0.8 coming in and it's 0 0.6 leaving so that's a useful range on the auto squelch so very satisfactory it's a good sensitivity good squelch operation but a bit more clumsy on the way the uh, the firmware is with it not allowing you to select am unless you reselect for eu so there we have it the jopix ap6 and we'll do an on the air test later on thank you for watching